Hello and welcome to Dirt Obsession Vlogs, everyone. If you followed us here from Dirt Obsession, thank you. Dirt Obsession is our ATV channel and we plan to keep it that way, so we started Dirt Obsession Vlogs as an outlet for all our Dirt Obsession type adventures that we want to keep separate from the main channel. Uploading may end up being more frequent here because we're going to do more rides, adventure bikes, and hopefully more XC race stuff, so I hope you stay tuned. ATVs are my first passion, but to say the ATV market is stagnant right now is kind of like saying Netflix is lacking in their creative content. Go, you know the, you know the thing. But never fear, that's what we've got YouTube for. And much like the way YouTube fills my entertainment need with topic-focused special interest content that I can't get in the mainstream, so too do adventure motorcycles fill my endless desire to avoid long-term financial security. So today I want to talk about adventure bikes. Because the adventure motorcycle category has so much market interest, it's kind of like being a kid in the candy store after watching the manufacturers roll out the same ATV year after year. I mean Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Triumph, KTM, Aprilia, Ducati, MV Agusta, BMW, Royal Enfield, even Harley Davidson and CF Moto have entered the fray recently. And I'm sure I'm missing some. So if you're interested in adventure bikes, it's easy to get sucked into the rabbit hole of comparison shopping. But it sure is nice to have some options. So today I'm going to tell you why I went with a used Africa Twin 1000 as my first adventure motorcycle, along with some of the things I wish I knew before getting into ADV bikes. Also, I'm riding through northern Kentucky on Route 421 through Bedford and crossing the river into Madison, Indiana on this trip. I'll try to include road names and locations in case you're interested in checking this route out because it was really pretty and there's actually some decent gravel roads to check out over in Madison. So, back to the adventure bikes. When my BFF flying Brian the Quadmaster and I started looking at adventure bikes, we were pretty convinced we needed something simple. Maybe something more dirt oriented like a KLR 650 or a DS 650. We planned on a lot of dirt riding and the prices seemed pretty low risk. What eventually stopped us from doing that was knowing that we'd have to do quite a bit of highway riding in order to get to the places we planned on going. So FB scoured the market for a new Tenere 700, which we'll review later, and I decided to ditch cruisers in favor of bigger adventures. We've both been through enough machines to know that it's important to be honest with yourself about what you want and what you plan to do with it and where you're willing to make your compromises. I needed something capable of two-up riding if I was going to replace the cruiser. It needed to be a decent daily commuter, capable of long highway stretches, and be a little bit more spirited than my noisy V-twin. And of course it had to have some off-road capability. The things I wanted to avoid was overcomplicated electronics and something so expensive that I'd be afraid to drop it. For me that ended up being a 2017 Africa Twin 1000. I like the 2016 to 2019 1000 Africa Twins specifically because they were simpler than the newer versions which have long booting computer screens and what seemed like difficult user interfaces and the fancy electronic aids that I really didn't want to pay for. That's not to say that I'm afraid of technology, but I've always liked motorcycle riding to be a little bit more simple and as basic as possible. I'm also not saying that older Africa Twins are better than the newer 1100s. I've seen forums where folks are criticizing the build quality on the new Africa Twins with the smaller frame diameters and multi-piece swing arms and disposable engines. But I don't think the logic holds up there, and I could certainly see upgrading to a newer model one day. But for now, I like the simplicity of the trigger controlled traction settings and the on the dash button to turn off the ABS. The Tenere 700 is even simpler without the rider aids, but I don't mind having traction control and ABS as long as I can easily adjust them. There are some perks to buying used too. The bike I found was pretty low mileage, right around its first service interval, and it had some of the options that I wanted on the bike already, like a center stand, a touring windshield, Honda bags, and a Corbin seat already installed. Those things added up to several grand in additions that help increase the overall value to me while staying well shy of the MSRP of a new one. So far, i put just under 10,000 miles on it in the first few months, and I'm pretty happy with it. Although being past the honeymoon phase by several thousand miles, I can say that all the criticisms and the multitude of reviews out there are pretty warranted. The front suspension is super soft, the power is adequate but not exciting, I kinda wish it had tubeless wheels, the foot pegs are super tiny, the air filters require an excavator to get to, and the front wheel tends to drift offline a bit when you try to ride it aggressively. But it also checks all the boxes I had. It's better than I expected for two-up riding. 
My wife likes it more than the big baggers I've had in the past. Adding preload to the rear suspension when she's ready to get on is easy. In fact, all suspension adjustments are easy. The pillion and contouring of the Corbin seat helps keep us both comfortable. As a daily commuter, it's one of the better bikes I've ever had. You have to get used to the height and stop and go traffic, but that acclimation period was much shorter than I was expecting. The cargo space makes it easy to lug around first lunch, second lunch, pre-workout meals, gym bag, and whatever else I decide I need for the day. It also really surprised me on the highway. Highway speeds are effortless and the touring windshield and flared shoulders of the bike keep wind buffeting to an absolute minimum. It's much more comfortable and confident on the highway than I was expecting and that's one area where it definitely stands out over a Tenere 700. I mentioned the power was adequate but not exciting. Let me put that in perspective. It's much more entertaining than most V-Twins. It's still about 93 horsepower on a 500 pound bike, so it's got plenty of power and it will outrun many things on the road. But it's not a sport bike. It doesn't rev particularly high, and with the agility of the bike, you definitely feel like you could stand to have a few more sometimes. It feels like it's down a couple hundred cc's from its displacement because the Tenere 700 is a little more peppy and higher revving on secondary roads. The highway is the only place where the power difference is noticeable, and it's only cruising at highway speed. I'd guess the Tenere is actually a little faster all the way at the top end. That was Bishop Hill Road. Very, very pretty. But that's a compromise, because if you're actually going to take it off-road, the power and the power delivery is perfect, especially for somebody new to taking a 500-pound motorcycle in the dirt. There's no hard hit anywhere in the RPMs, so the bike isn't going to get squirrely unless you really ask it to. The power delivery is absolutely as linear as it gets, making the best power between 5,000 and 6,500 RPMs. And it's still very fun to ride on the roads. I mentioned it's not a sport bike, but it's still much, much sportier than a cruiser. Carving up secondary and tertiary roads on the way to finding some dirt and gravel is probably my favorite part of the adventure motorcycles and definitely what I like best about the Africa Twin. You can feel the vagueness in the front end that the professional reviewers like to discuss, but that's a side effect of a lot of soft front suspension travel combined with the 21 inch front wheel. It never feels concerning and it doesn't cause you to hold back at all. It just floats to the outside of a corner more than a sportier bike would, but you adjust easily to it and you really stop noticing it after a while. I really do think the Africa Twin 1000s are a great first big adventure bike for a few reasons. First, they can do anything, and laying up on a smaller single thumper is going to leave you wishing you had more in certain areas, especially highways, and two, the power is very beginner friendly. It's good, but it's not going to melt your face. And three, the price on these can be very good. But like everything else, they're demanding top dollar these days. And finally, it allows you to focus on increasing your skills instead of trying to learn complicated electronics. But all that said, there's still a few things I wish I knew before getting into adventure bikes. One, it's not as easy as it looks on TikTok and Instagram. There's a lot of pro riders out there doing ridiculous things on big heavy adventure bikes and if you're not one of them, you're not going to buy a big adventure bike and suddenly become one of them. It's harder than it looks and when you're facing a ride home that's going to take several hours on a bike you plan on riding tomorrow as well, you're going to be a little bit more careful than you think. I've seen other YouTubers and guys in the forums who bought bigger adventure bikes and then decided to downgrade to something like a KLR. To me, that's kind of like having a cheerleader, but lacking the sack to keep up. So you ultimately opt for her less genetically gifted second cousin, where you feel more safe. Riding an adventure bike off-road is really about having a bike that can do everything. If you only want to ride off-road and you have a lot of opportunities for that kind of riding in your area, a dual sport is probably a better idea. But if you're like me and you need to ride an hour or two for some decent dirt and gravel, you're going to want something to keep you entertained while you're on your way there and back. Nothing beats a bigger adventure bike for that. I also wish I knew how good these bigger bikes were for two-up riding and crushing highway miles. If I had, I would have made the switch sooner, because I'm racking up more miles on the Africa Twin and going places I wouldn't have ever seen on a cruiser. It's just a more capable and more fun bike for exploring.
And finally, I really didn't realize how much more technique I'd be using on a bike like this. I've ridden for years. I was riding motorcycles before I could drive a car. Everything from sport bikes to big baggers and dirt bikes to bar hoppers. These bikes require much more technique than anything else, especially if you want to ride off-road competently. There's definitely some tips and tricks you pick up from instructors on YouTube. Moto Trek and Brett Tack's uh, YouTube channels are very helpful, but it might be a good idea to swallow your pride and take an off-road course if you're new to this, especially if you're a hands-on learner. No amount of miles on a cruiser is going to prepare you for an adventure bike, but the payoff is definitely worth the investment of time. Thick gravel. Ooh. Soft mud under thick gravel is a weird experience and the first for me. So uh, we're proceeding with an exceeding amount of caution. I apologize for the lack of entertainment, but it was wet up here earlier today. I'm just trying not to fall over and realizing how very not good at this I am. Screw it, I'm having fun. Thanks for checking out the video everyone. I hope you found it interesting and be sure to let me know if you like the Dirt Obsession vlogs idea and if the videos don't suck too hard maybe we'll see you again on a new channel. I guarantee it looks easy on the GoPro and it probably, it probably is easy. It's just a new sensation for me but you can see there's still water running over this road and the gravel, the dirt under the gravel is very soft so my tires are just sinking and it just feels like the bike is just gonna track whichever dang way it wants to go It'd probably help if I stood up but <laughs>